Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome back to your HMEDU TV news update. Uh, giving us caught up on a couple things. That's why we're getting a couple more today. By Colin Wooder at Jalbnik, which is a, a car enthusiast magazine. Um, <laughs> so, a while ago, there was a investigation going into the Sean Fain, head of the UAW. And... It's come out that apparently that the reason why that investigation had started in the first place was because Neil Borofsky, the federal union monitor appointed to, you know, in as, as part of a deal with the federal government to not get clamped down on further, uh, the union agreed to allow to, 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 to as an anti-corruption measure to do two things. One, have a direct election of with 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 union members as opposed to like internal monk leadership which is kind of like why the uaw has kind of been stagnant for so many years and it's also coincidentally how we got sean fain one of the most uh active and loved union members at, uh union presidents in a very long time due to uh his work and sort of clawing back the uh rights that were given up in the wake of the 08 financial crisis to basically bail out the industry. Uh, and this man, Neil Borofsky, who is in charge for keeping an eye on the uh, United Auto Workers Union, allegedly took issue with Sean Fain calling for a ceasefire in Gaza and used his position to pressure Fain to drop to change course. Shane refused, upsetting Borofsky enough to announce a new investigation into the union. In September of 2020, uh, UAW President Dennis Williams pled guilty to uh, conspiracy to embezzle use of the funds. He was the 15th person by the Justice Department's long-running investigation of corruption into human corruption, the second consecutive UAW president to earn prison sentence. Um, he is succeeded by Fane. Fane went to lead an incredibly successful strike against the Detroit Big Three, and then pulled off a surprise win when, Volkswagen, uh, when, when a Volkswagen factory in Tennessee voted to unionize Tennessee, a notoriously anti-union state. And yet, it wasn't until the UAW formally came out and paid for a ceasefire that things reportedly got heated. Fane and Neil Borofsky, this is the federal point in union, this was a quote. The move to not set well with supporters of Israel of Israel's war. Among them, Neil Borofsky, he let Fane know about it directly on December the 14th. Two weeks after the UAW released its statement, Fane appeared on Capitol Hill for a press conference with members of Congress calling for a ceasefire. The evening before, according to a source familiar with the conversation, Borofsky called Fane and urged him to rethink the union position. Borofsky said that it had pained him to see the UAW's wheel logo in anti-war protests where UAW members were present, and he told Fain that there had been repeated instances of anti-Semitism at his protest. Borofsky told Fain he was not calling at the Federal Monitor, who has nearly unchecked power of the Union, but merely in his personal capacity. Fain told Borofsky, the source, that the ceasefire resolution was in no way anti-Semitic or even pro-Palestine, but simply an expression of the Union's desire for peace. Fain added that it was impossible for the Monitor to call the Union president in a strict personal capacity, given the power dynamic at play, but the Union intended to stand by its call for a ceasefire, and he would be appearing at the press conference on Capitol the next day. The event went off his plate. So, Borofsky, not liking that call, sent a letter to the UAW's International Executive Board after the Anti-Defamation League, one of the biggest financial uh, 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 recipients of APAC money and, 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 and one of the political operative uh, arms used at sort of quelling at, at both at both making life difficult for Palestinians uh, living in the diaspora as well as uh, financially uh, financially try, attempting to finish, to ruin anyone who was who was who was deliberately pro Palestinian. And, uh, and, and, and he, in his letter, he complained about the union's demand for a ceasefire in Gaza, and in particular the actions of the local uh, uh, 7902 in support of the same. In his letter to the e IEB, Borofsky wrote, Although this issue is outside the monitor's jurisdiction, we think it is important to forward the message to the IEB, given the serious concerns raised here. So, obviously an admission that he was going outside of his 
duties and overstepping his authority. He also previously admitted to pressuring Fane, saying, for what it's worth, I had previously shared with Sean similar concerns that were raised directly to me shortly after the EIB issued its own ceasefire statement. Later that month, the EIB held its quarterly meeting, and at this time, Broski joined remotely. When, the, when confronted about how inappropriate his behavior was, Broski doubled down and he even had to listen to the ADL. Members of the board were repeatedly shocked, were reportedly shocked that he would continue to try and change the union's mind about its call for ceasefire. A few days later, the UAW's lawyer sent Broski a letter calling him out on his overreach. You called President Fane and introduced your co and introduced your conversation with President Fane as pointed out strictly on a personal level, during which time you shared with President Fane your personal concern about his position on President Gaza. Uh, Gaza, your call to President Fane on the issue so blatantly outside the modern jurisdiction was inappropriate as your office holds disproportionate power over the UAW, and even strictly personal sharing of your opinion implicitly implicates such power dynamic. Nonetheless, out of respect for you and the office of monitor, President Fane discussed the conversation with only those in his inner circle and chose not to escalate the improper exchange any further. Six days after the union sent this letter, Broski announced he was opening an investigation into the union over a disagreement Fane had with the secretary, treasurer. Broski said he wanted any and all emails, text messages, and instant messages sent between February the 12th and February 23rd, which coincidentally happened to be about the same time the UAW was dealing with pressure to capitulate to the ADL's demands. It's entirely possible the investigation is legitimate, but the timing sure is suspicious. Especially since Republicans recently held a hearing over claims of rampant anti-Semitism in unions that took particular aim at pro ceasefire UAW, lo uh, UAW locals. Borofsky has also announced that he plans to expand the scope of his investigation, and, and this is just me, but I have a sneaking suspicion that Borofsky is also going to lose some copies of the of of, of internal union uh, documents, including text mails, emails, and all that, which will, will probably be passed over to the ADL, which will be passed over to people at APAC, which will then be passed over to members of the Israeli government. So, you know, because it is the the Israeli government is very much known for keeping profiles on people um, in other countries who are who are either who are not in full support of their genocide in Gaza. This is you know this is an anti-genocide channel. This is why we are pro-Palestine. This is why we are pro-Ukraine. So regardless, ladies and gentlemen, regardless, uh, I think ultimately the uh, ultimately I think that. The uh, UAW. I, I love everything Sean Fain's been doing for, you, for the UAW. I am very much a pro union guy. So, I when I heard that he had an investigation going on for financial dealings, I, I I I was kind of like had a little cognitive dissonance with that, not wanting to believe it. But like I was so I was gonna wait and see. Well, I, was, I did a wait and see model before passing judgment, and I'm very happy I did because obviously. Obviously, this is uh, politically motivated. I think Neil uh, Borofsky is going to keep his uh, job after this. I don't believe that anything really is going to happen to him, um, per se, but I do think that um, I wouldn't be surprised if Borofsky continues to do, do anything and everything to uh, kind of control the UAW and force them to uh, follow, uh, to endorse Israel's genocide of the Palestinians. Hey, thanks for watching. If you want to, you want to talk to me outside of this video, outside of live streams, or just be a join the community and be a part of it, you can do so at hibmedia.gg/discord. Discord links there. We'd love to have you. And given the financial situation of the economy right now, I know this is a tall ask, but if you have the scratch to, to spare, please consider donating and becoming a supporter at hibmedia.gg/tip. All of our perks are serviced through our Discord channel, including early access videos, exclusive videos, and more. Your generosity is a blessing, and a dollar a month is a boot to my bank account. Thank you so very much for watching. I appreciate you, and have a great day.